Well, hello, WC students, and welcome to Sermon Notes. My name is Jackson, and I'm really excited to be here with you guys today. Tonight, or today, we're going to be diving into Psalm 51. But before we do that, I wanted to tell you a quick story that, for me, I think is going to really uh, maybe shape a little bit where we're headed with this psalm. You know, when I first started leading worship, I had no idea what I was doing. In fact, I didn't even want to lead worship when I first got into ministry. When I first got into ministry, I wanted to be a pastor. So, right, I was going to work the company ladder, if you will. I was going to start off as a youth intern, go be a youth director, go be an associate pastor, you know, that kind of like work that path, right? That was my plan. So I started working as a youth intern at a church down in Mansfield. And I was just, I was a hype guy. My job was to be the fun guy, lead all the games, and do all of the fun things, and just be energetic all the time. But about two months into me working at this church, our worship pastor left. And so all of a sudden, we didn't have music for our Wednesday night service and our Sunday morning services, and we didn't have anybody to fill in. And so uh, they made the insane decision of putting me on that stage and saying, go for it, dude. Now, I want to be very clear here. Uh, This was not like they were putting, like, if you've seen me lead worship, it's not like they were putting me in how I do it today on stage. I had never played guitar before. I had never sang before. And yet they put me on stage. So my wife was working at this church at the time, and she talks about it as the worst part of her week listening to me sing and play guitar because it was just bad, guys. It was just really, really bad. So why did they do it? I don't know. I don't think they knew why they did it. I think they were just doing it to do it. And so for some crazy reason, rather than hiring somebody else, they decided to go with me and take and take a large gamble on seeing what happens with me and if I could grow into it. Well, thankfully, about eight months later, my poor, poor youth band was not falling apart <laughs> anymore during these songs and the services. We were no longer having to start a song, stop it halfway, start it again, in service because we were able to actually kind of make it through service because we were learning from our mistakes. Fast forward four years, five years from then, I'm leading more services at this church at the time. And through that season, through those four or five years of learning, growing, failing time and time again, I learned so much. And I was so thankful for that time to learn. And for me, one of the most crucial things that I learned during that season was this thing that I read from this book I've got here today called The Worship Pastor. It's a book by a guy named Zach Hicks. Now, quite frankly, I don't think you'll be interested in this book, so I'm not going to tell you to go look this book unless you want to be a worship leader. I don't think it's something that you'll be too interested in. Unless, if you are, that's awesome. Go for it. I totally encourage it. But I want to read us this passage today that I think is really going to help us um, see Psalm 51 in maybe a different light than we're maybe used to. So, uh, Zach Hicks says, If we think of the world as a body then the church is the vehicle within it through which God chooses to carry his life-giving gospel. In this circulatory system of gospel transport, worship is the harp, the central propulsion chamber where the gospel is given to the people of God, fueling and pressurizing us to be sent out. Mission, then, is the network of veins and arteries that take the gospel out, reaching further into the body for the purposes of gathering more regions of the world back in and under the life-giving influence of its center and heart. Just as the blood and arteries and veins follows a circular circular pattern away from and back to the heart, so mission goes out and gathers in to be re-pumped by worship. Together, worship and mission operate as one unified system. And so for me, that was huge, huge in my understanding of worship. Not only is the praises that we sing on Sunday morning important, but they're not the whole picture. They spur us on to that Monday morning action. You know, every country song, I love country music, guys. Every country song says, uh, what is it? It's uh, churching on Sunday and something else on a Monday. And this is the opposite of that. This is churching on Sunday and going deeper on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, into devotionals and all these things, right? And so, this brings me into our our psalm for today, Psalm 51. So, if you haven't read Psalm 51, I encourage you to take a second, hit pause on this video, and just go read it. Maybe read it once, twice, three times, um, just to kind of center yourself around that and to kind of get into what we're talking about today. So, I'm not going to read it until the end of our time today, 
But what I am going to do is I'm going to ask us to look at two specific sections here. And that's verses 1 through 12 and verses 13 through the end. Because I think these are two uh, compelling sections as the psalm is, but they're also two different sections is how I read them. You know, 1 through 9, or sorry, 1 through uh, 12, I see it and I read David saying, God, change me. God, come heal me. Admitting his transgressions, admitting his sins, admitting all of these things that have so clearly been put before him. And yet, coming back and saying, God, change me. God, be my guide. God, heal me. And I think that's really important because that's where all of this starts. It all starts with us. It starts with us saying, God, I need you. God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. Okay, so that's 1 through 12. But 13 through 19, for me, it shifts. And I see David change from God, change me, to God, change me so that I can change the world for your name. All of a sudden, it takes it from this personal worship kind of place to this social mission kind of place. Change me so that I can change the world for your name. And I don't want us to miss that because I think a lot of times what we do is we think about the change that we want to see, the change that's around us, the things that are so frustrating to look at, the frustrating to be a part of, whatever it might be, we get frustrated by it, but we forget that we can have a part to play in that. And heck, we might have a part to play in that already. And we just don't know it. And so today, I'm going to do this thing that I've I've done at covers a couple times, and that's just ask you to make a T-chart. And a T-chart, I think is what it's called at least, is just a line across horizontally and then a line vertically that goes above that. It makes two columns. And in that right column, right column is over here for you guys, um, what I want you to do is I want you to write social or us or them, however you want to play it, or the world, whatever it is. And then in that left column, I want you to write me, okay? So take a second, do that. In that right column where it says world or us, whatever you put there, I want you to just write things that you see in the world around you that you would call maybe injustices, that you would call things that need to be changed for the greater good. Um, Not because you want them changed. I want to make that clear. Not because you want to win the lottery. Not because you want to do all of these things. Rather... So because you feel God stirring in you something to go change this, to go be a part of this, to go be a part of making this more like the kingdom of heaven among us. Okay, so once you do that, list out some examples, whatever that is for you, things that you think are really important to change. Come back to that left column, okay? And in that left column, I want you to identify things that you can specifically do to be that change, to begin that process, if it's not already been, been, been begun, if it's not already began around uh, you right now, whatever it might be, okay? So your actions that you can do, I guess you're actually over here, your actions that you can do and how they're going to change the world. So once you've done that, take some time to do that. Don't, don't continue this video until you've done that. Once you've taken some time to do that, I want you to come back. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to use the words of Psalm 51 as our prayer for today and for many others. If you ever find yourself struggling to find something to pray, I highly encourage. This is one of my favorite psalms across the board. Um, and it's because it's just such an easy prayer for us to pray today. And so we're going to come back, we're going to pray that, and we're going to do that. So let's pray. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me, yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in in that secret place. 
Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, and let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper, Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem, and you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous and the burnt offerings offered whole, and bulls will be offered on your altar. Amen.